Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pokemon RPG, aka the kind of Meister, aka Packy. I was in the motherfucking building, and baby Pokemon is a thing that I've never actually seen. Or, well, I may not have seen. Maybe it's a thing, but I don't think I've seen it a lot because I've seen lists of like savage Pokemon and like what's our favorite big ass evolution like Tyranitar or freaking like Charizard or Venus or all those big Pokemon. But always the little guys are always the guys that are always unknown, such as maybe Charmander, Tyrogue, Bonsly, Happiny, Togepi. I couldn't put name on name on the list like Pichu or everybody else just because I have no clue why they're just like you know when you raid everybody has a start every Pokemon has a start such as Happini becomes Chansey the healer Pokemon Togepi becomes basically Togetic then Togekiss the freaking like but I have no idea what Toke Kiss is, but whatever. Tyro becomes Hitmon Leo, Hitmon Chan, or Hitmon Top. Bonsai becomes freaking Sudowoodo. It's just like, baby Pokemon are just the cutest things I've ever witnessed. And trust me, the breeder in me, just like, it looks just, it just they're just adorable. Come on, you cannot, you cannot tell me they're not adorable. Which is one of the main reasons I do the video. And another one, because I don't see this video or topic talked about. Because it's always like, what's our favorite big Pokemon? Like, you know, we always talk about these powerful Pokemon. Because no one ever uses, no one ever plays the Little Cup tier, which is basically like these baby Pokemon, basically. So, baby Cup tier is what I call it basically. So without any further ado, always your time, ladies and gentlemen and others, I'll be naming my top five baby Pokemon. Clefa, the Starship Pokemon takes the number 5 spot introduced in the first generation of Pokemon with 3 abilities, Q-Charm, Magic Guard, and Friend Guard. Now, the reason I put Clefa in here is because when I was when I was watching the original Pokemon series, I remember one of the episodes we saw Clefa and the whole Moonstone concept and how it's from space. And that really, like, I think it was Clefables, it was also Clefas during the end, like Clefable, Clef, uh, Clefairy, and Clefa. I remember that because Clefairy and Clefa and all those three evolutions are just like one of my favorite, like, little, uh, one of my few favorite Starship Pokemon because... We also know another Starship Pokemon that I definitely do, like Jirachi, even the Legendary. I have a thing for Starship Pokemon because it's so interesting to me because of how, how my life was revolved around stars and how I wanted to learn stars. When I was a kid, I was really interested in the concept of stars and astronomy. Not so much anymore. I was really interested in that, but nah, I don't think today that I'm interested because then uh, whenever I look at Cleffa, I remind me of the time I always used to research stars and always like used to figure out the constellations and everything. I don't remember the constellations anymore, sadly, but then. That's the part that really interested me more. And how cute. That, look, this is going to be me gawing over how adorable this Pokemon is. So I don't think I'm a man for this video today. I don't think I'm a man. Oh my god. It's just they're adorable as hell. Like, those little like, pink cheeks, those whole ears, and the whole star shaped Pokemon. How it was my Moonstone since, like, freaking from the moon and everything. It was, that was pretty cool. The first anime episodes made me like Cleffa. And then I, like, I never wish I caught a Cleffa. Maybe I'll catch one of the Cleffas. Then the sixth generation introduced its fairy type. And it used to be a normal type. Now it's a fairy type. I think it's represented. I think it's definitely dead. Well, I think that's a good type in have Cleffa. And now on to number four. Pichu, the tiny mouse Pokemon, takes the number four spot introduced in the first generation of Pokemon. Stupid, static, and lightning rod. Now, Pichu, when I first discovered it, was it just like it evolved from Pikachu, one of my very childhood favorite Pokemon. Not my childhood favorite Pokemon that much anymore, but when I discovered it, it was just so cool and interesting because I didn't know Pikachu had like a pre evolution. I don't think a lot of us knew until like later on in the anime and the series when we watched I was like, Pikachu has a pre evolution. I thought I always had an evolution, and that's it, but obviously, it's not a baby Pokemon. And as I grew older, I discovered that, but obviously, every Pokemon has to have a baby evolution. Not every Every single Pokemon, some Pokemon do. I just got Pichu's uh, pre evolution. It was pretty cool because I remember there was a TV show I watched, a little like Pokemon spin off. It wasn't, I don't know who it was. I can't remember. I wish I wish I knew his name. It, was a, it had a dope ass intro and everything. It was like, it talked about Pichu who was like in the streets, whatever, with another Pichu and like the whole like cool little street thing. With Pokemon. I can't remember the freaking show. Ah, I, I regret this so much, but that came to my mind when I was looking and searching for baby Pokemon to put on the list. This just came on my mind and that show came on my mind. If I ever find it, I'm never going to rewatch that show just because of how much I loved it as a kid. And like how adorable Pichu is. Pichu's a fucking adorable. Come on, look at his little pink cheeks. It's like it's more adorable than Pikachu. I thought Pikachu was freaking adorable as a kid. It's called Pichu. So that's basically this adorableness, the whole like childhood nostalgia how it reminded me of a TV show that I can't remember. I'll try to see if I can find that TV show. Maybe in the next videos that I do, maybe inform you guys what TV show it was. Now on to number three. A 
opinion that Playhouse Pokemon introduced in the fourth generation of Pokemon comes at number three in this power is three ability natural cure, serene grace, and friend guide. Now the reason I put happy in this list is not really a, like a logical reason, it's just because I d can't explain why I put happy in this list. It's just because of its freaking egg, like it holds like it's a freaking kangaroo holding its baby, or whatever. It's just so adorable how it's a playhouse Pokemon when it becomes when it evolves into a freaking uh what's it called? Chansey it becomes the healer Pokemon which is used in Pokemon Center and everything. I didn't know Chansey also had a pre evolution, right? I thought Chansey had a pre evolution. I was like, huh, oh, I never knew. I thought that Pokemon would just became like a full grown like freaking chancy, didn't couldn't breed or anything. I was it, it interested me so much and how Happini Brock's Happini was just so strong and everything because the anime is like influenced a lot of this decision list. Because I remember the I, I remember the anime where Happini was freaking strong. Like you think it'd be weak because it's a baby Pokemon, but contradicted so by being the strongest thing alive. And also it was like how to hold his eggs is so adorable. Like it's like the eyes, his whole like pet design and like this is how cute it is. Just no no good reason. No no no. no there's no good reason. No no I'm no man. Any reason why I put happy in this is just because how adorable it is. That's basically it, and on to number two. Munchak is a big Pokemon introduced in the fourth generation of Pokemon takes the number two spot on this list with three bits, pick up thick van Gilles. And the reason I put Munchlax on this list was just because of like how it's not adorable. It ain't adorable, but it's really just it's just really dope though. I really like how because it's a if it can eat a Pokemon, it obviously evolved a pre-evolution of Snorlax. Obviously you can tell from the bio and how much it freaking weighs. It weighs too much to be a baby Pokemon, but it's still a baby Pokemon consideration because it's a pre-evolution of Mo Snorlax. Now I just I, when I was a kid I always used to like always laugh at Munchlax, I used to eat everything. And now, then I realized, like, why would I eat so much? I realized now, as like a, a almost an adult, I eat a lot too. Whenever I eat, I, I always feel full. I always say I feel full like a munch sack. So I always say that. I always say that because just how much, how 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 satisfying must be to eat a lot to not feel full and eat, sleep, eat, sleep, and just eat, sleep, do your days like that. And plus, I didn't want to put all cute Pokemon. I want, I want to be a dude as well. So I decided to put a cool Pokemon like munch sack who just freaking eats everything in the sight and still and still can like run a bit faster. Like it just it's a cool ass Pokemon. I'll give it that. So it's not pretty dope cool in my opinion. Now on to the file number one. And finally, wrapping off this list is the Pokédot Pokémon Azul, introduced in the second generation of Pokémon. Three birds, huge power, thick fat, and Sap Sapper. Sap Sapper being one of the most chola in the game, by the way. So the reason I put Azul in there is because I don't think I see a Pokémon that could be so cute while being so cool at the same time. Like Sangon's freaking ball and evolving to one of the biggest and one of the most tank. I think one of the tankiest Pokémon Pokémon. Not Pokémon history, but one of the tankiest Pokémon I think I've heard in sixth generation. Azumarill? Yeah, I think Azumarill is pretty tanky. I don't know. One of my friends' favorite Pokémon, Dumbnex's favorite Pokémon, Azumarill, and I. I definitely do like a Zoomerel, and of course I love a Zoomerel even more. Though I don't know why, it's just it's ears like Mickey Mouse like ears. It's like po I have polka dots all over, and it's like, how it stands on its freaking ball like a freaking like a circus animal. I don't know. It's just something about it. Like sometimes there are things in this life that you cannot explain why you like it. Just you like it. If some people, other people cannot understand, then that's okay because you, you can't really explain it to them, so they can't really understand it unless they experience it for themselves. So it's just how it's overall its abilities are pretty cool in my opinion. How it's a normal fairy type, but Zoomerel is a Fairy type? Azuril. Azumarill. Oh, God damn it. Azumarill, the final evolution, I believe, is also a fairy type or normal type. Water and fairy. I thought Azumarill, Azuril would be a freaking water type. I guess it's a normal fairy. Well, I'm going to get the names mixed up a lot. Do not mind me. It's just it's overall how just cute it is. How it can stand on the little ball, whatever. And when it becomes a bigger Pokemon, it can become much of a threat. Definitely a good threat. And Sap Super, I did not know Azula had Sap Super. Well, that's a troll bit that it should be banned. It's probably banned on Azuril, Azumarill, or whatever. So that basically should wrap up my video, ladies and gentlemen. If you add there, I know there are a lot of Pokemon that are up on this list. Top five, because top five is too small to put a lot of favorite Pokemon of yours. So if your favorite Pokemon or your favorite baby Pokemon is on the video, be sure to comment below. Let me know. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well as my BG. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And folks, I leave you with a farewell.